a great doctor who had changed the many ways of how France had done their executions during the times of war and terror. My name is Nisaki, and I bring you the history of Charles Henry Sanson. The fourth head of the Sanson house, which worked within the enforcement of the capital punishment for generations. In the turmoil of the French Revolution, Sanson had executed people from all social classes with his invention of the guillotine. His executions began to decrease in numbers as years went by. Charles Henry Sanson was no assassin, but an executioner, but was also a doctor above all things. A role of an executioner was passed down in the generations of his family, thus he was destined to become one, not only to save lives, but also to snuff them out. Henry Sanson was born into extreme wealth, but even all the money he and his family owned, it didn't stop him from being scorned by other people due to his occupation. He had the very idea of his own destiny set in stone, causing the young Sanson to have many anguish in his youth. Leading the elegant lifestyle worthy of, a no of nobility, the Sanson house was loved and respected by the king and queen of France, and showed great pity for the citizens governed by them. It has been said they provided the cutting-edge medical technology, which was cultivated from the executions, free of charge to the needy. However, the time did not allow Henry Sanson peace. He, who had jobs of, as an executioner, was forced upon him even after France's revolution occurred, and eventually had to be present in the execution of his beloved King Louis XVI and his queen, Marie Antoinette. In his quote, Death is tomorrow's hope. Man, I feel bad for the poor guy. But that doesn't stop what history has proven. Now, onto Henry Sanson's true history. Charles Henry Sanson was the fourth in the sixth generation family dynasty of executioners. His great grandfather, a soldier in the, in the French Royal Army named Charles Sanson from 1658 to 1695 of Abbeville, he was appointed as executioner of Paris in, in 1684. Upon his death in 1695, the Sanson Patriarch was, was passed down onto his son, also named Charles, from 1681 to September 12, 26. When the second Charles died, an official regency held in the position held until his young son, Charles John Baptiste Sanson, from 1719 to August 4, 1778, until he reached maturity. The third Sanson served all his life as a high executioner, and in his time fathered 16 children, 10 whom survived to adulthood. The eldest of his sons, Charles Henry Sanson, known as the Great Sanson, apprenticed with his father for 20 years and sworn into the office on December 26, 1778. Charles Henry Sanson was born into Paris to Charles John Baptiste Sanson and his wife, Madeleine Tronson, was first raised in the convent school in Rouen until the year of 1753. A father of another student recognized his father as an executioner and had to leave the school in order to not ruin the school's reputation. Charles Henry Sanson then was privately educated. He had a strong aversion to his family's business. His father's paralysis and the assertiveness of his parental grandmother, Anne Martha Sanson, led Charles Henry to leave his study of medicine to assume the job of executioner in order to guarantee the livelihood of his family. As an executioner, he came to be known as Monjour de Paris, Gentleman of Paris. On January 10, 1765, he married his second wife, Marie Anne Jonier. They had two sons, Henry from 1776 to 1830, who became his official successor, and Gabriel from 1769 to 1792, who also worked in the family business. In 1757, Sanson assisted his uncle Nicholas Charles Gabriel Sanson, 1721 to 1795, executioner of Rams, with an extremely gruesome execution of the king's attempt assassin, Robert Francius Damien. His uncle quit his position as an executioner after the event. In 1778, Charles Henry officially received the blood red coat, the sign of a master executioner, from his father Charles Jean Baptiste, and held this position for 38 years, until his son Henry in 1795, and after he showed serious signs of illness. The majority of executions were performed by Samson and other assistants. He was the first execution to use the guillotine, executing Nicolas Jacques Curitier for robbery and assault on April 25, 1792. The use of guillotine transformed Sanson's status under the revolutionary idea from outcast to citizen, equal in rights and, and civil duties. Charles Henry Sanson performed over, over 2,918 executions, including Louis XVI. Even though he was not a supporter of the monarchy, he was initially reluctant to execute the king, but in the end performed the execution. 
As David Jordan notes, no major de Paris had ever had the honor of executing a king, and Sanson wanted precise instructions. Sanson experienced in the political and psychological pressures of revolutionary Paris. He had the duty of executing Louis XVI under the power of sitting, provisional government, being the heir to the line of executioners, to abuse this duty would have brought shame to the family name, endangered himself and to his family members. He experienced the stress of having to execute not only the king, but the successive waves of officials as those in power shifted rapidly in time revolutionary change. The execution of Louis XVI was particularly important, fearing rescue efforts. The streets of Paris were lined with troops as Louis' carriage took its somber two hours to travel to the scaffold arriving at 10 a.m. on January 21, 1793. After Sanson officially cut his hair, Louise attempted to address the crowd but was silenced with a drum roll, and Louise was executed. Sanson pulling his head from the basket to show the crowd, but the execution may not have been gone smoothly as possible. One of two accounts of Louise's death suggests that the blade did not suffer from go and had to be borne down by the executioner to get a clean cut. Quite possibly, then, the execution went from being quick and fast to being more difficult and painful. As David Address notes, however, with his spine, it's nevertheless that unlikely or less unlikely that Louis could have uttered the terrible cry that one account claims. The Queen Marie Antoinette was executed by his son Henry, seated his father in 1795, and Charles Henry who only attended. Later, using the guillotine, Sanson and his men executed excessive waves of well-known revolutionaries, such as Danton, Robespierre, Saint Just, Herbert, and Desmoulins. After the revolution, Sanson was instrumental of the adoption of the guillotine as the standard form of execution. After Joseph Ignace Guillotine proposed in Louis a new execution machine, Sanson delivered a memorium of unique weight and incite the French assembly. Sanson, who owned and maintenance all of his own equipment, argued persuasively multiple executions were too demanding for old methods. The relatively lightweight tool of his trade were unfair a burden on the executioner, he noted. Even worse, the physical exertion was too taxing and likely to result in accidents, and the victims themselves were likely to resort to acts of desperation during the lengthy, unpredictable procedures. When the guillotine's prototypes first tested on April 17, 1792, Retreat Hospital in Paris, Sansoms led the inspection. Swift and efficient decapitations of straw barrels were followed by a line of sheep, and finally human corpses. By the end, Sansom led the expector pronouncing the new device a sounding success. Within a week, the assembly had approved its use and on April 25, 1792, Sanson inaugurated the era of guillotine by executing the robber Nicolas Jacques Pellier and at the Palais de Griefs. Sanson hobbies in concluding the section of those he executed and the production of medicine using herbs he grew in his garden. In his free time, he liked to play the violin and cello, listened to uh, Christoph Willingbad Kluck, and met with his longtime friend Tobias Schmidt a well-regarded German maker of the musical instruments who would later build Sanson's guilty. An adequate reports of that Charles Henry Sanson, after his retirement, met Napoleon Bonaparte and was asked if he could still sleep af after he executed more than 3,000 people. Sanson's answer was, if emperor, kings, and dictators can sleep well, why should an executioner? Many would see that Charles Henry Sanson was a sadistic man, but in reality, he did not always enjoy his work. He was sometimes opposed to what he did, and eventually the gore became too much for him. The vision was seen as an honorable, but internally he had struggled. And to further break the stereotype and all that all execution was sadistic, one can look into his diary. He seems to have been a humane man, doing all that he lay in his power to spare his victims unnecessary suffering. He felt as if the public did not fully understand his executions. He felt that if the people could really see the experience, the fear from the victims, execution and the popularity with, of them would be less. Charles Henry Sanson died on July 4th, 1806, and is buried in, in his family plot in Montmartre Cemetery in Paris. So, what do you all think? But I hope you do enjoy this video. If you like it, please leave a comment down below and let me see what you guys think about it. Until then, this is Misaki, logging out! Thank you for watching the video, senpai! If you liked it, please leave a like or a comment! Subscribe if you want to see more, and make sure you ring the bell to be notified when we upload another video! Thank you again for watching Kaldia Gurus! Good luck and fight hard, senpai!